Hello, I'm Chris Booth with Exotica Jewelry and TitaniumRingsForever.com here to explain how we color the metals we use, titanium and niobium. I began making jewelry in high school and since 1978 I've specialized in titanium and niobium. Over the years I've demonstrated the coloring process to many people at art fairs, and schools, and in our studio and I'm happy to share this with a wider audience. Before I show the process, you need to know the coloring or anodizing these metals involves an electrical hazard, so please read the following. My bath is distilled water and ammonium sulfate. I use a concentration of 1 8th cup per gallon. Some people use TSP, trisodium phosphate, or other electrolytes. I am using a power supply that converts AC to DC and allows me to vary the voltage level. The positive side of the output is the anode and it is connected to the piece you want to color. The negative is the cathode and is submerged in the bath. We use titanium for our cathode because it does not corrode. I'll start at 10 volts and increase the voltage to about 70. Now I'll change the colors by starting at around 60 volts and increasing to about 100 volts. The sequence of colors is exactly the same for niobium and titanium even though for a particular color the voltage required for niobium is slightly higher than it is for titanium. The anodizing process creates transparent oxide layers that bend light at different angles. As the voltage levels increase, the oxide layer gets thicker and the color changes. Now I will use time in the bath as a variable. I'm setting the voltage at about 55, but I'll pull the metal out before the whole strip reaches the color that 55 volts produces. That color is only on the last part that leaves the bath. Here is a strip showing the range of colors and some of the voltage levels used. So, how have we used this incredible phenomenon? Well, here are some of our finished items. Thanks for watching, everyone.